If you've clicked on this video, you're most probably planning a trip to the wonderful city of Singapore and honestly, who could blame you? It is a city that uniquely blends modern technology and infrastructure with their rich history and culture. There is so much to do but what if you only had 24 hours in Singapore and can only do the absolute highlights? Well in this video, I'll be sharing with you my recommended itinerary in Singapore if I could only spend a day here. I will be showing you what to eat, where to go, highlights and prices at each venue as well as give you options so that you can plan according to your budget and time constraints. There are also chapters in this video so that you can choose and customize your own personal Singapore adventure. My goal is to give you as much information as I can so that you can make the most of your time in Singapore. But before we get into it, hi, I'm Steve from The Fat Life Project and I post weekly food and travel content showing you fat things to see, eat and do. And so if that sounds like your jam, I highly recommend subscribing so that we can go on more fun, fat adventures together. With that out of the way, let's get straight into it. There are a few things you need to know before traveling to Singapore and if you only have 24 hours, you need to know this next one. Gone are the days of the physical white card, you need to fill in an online Singapore Singapore arrival card which you can do up to three days prior to arriving in Singapore and while you can actually do so at the airport filling it prior to arrival simply allows you to clear immigrations faster and make the most of your 24 hours in Singapore you can actually do that right now at this link which I've also included in my description box and also through the ICA app which you can download at the Apple or Google Play stores you can actually use your credit card at most places in Singapore including shopping malls the MRT etc. And as we are only here for a day, I would definitely say stick with that option. But I would still recommend you have some cash on hand or better yet, if you can spare 15 minutes or so at a 7-Eleven, I would also recommend getting one of their cash cards which is called a Nets card and load it up to avoid those pesky overseas credit card charges. And also you can use this Nets card for the trains as well as paying for your food at Chinatown. I actually found out the hard way that most of the food stalls there do not take MasterCard or Visa. Speaking of China Chinatown, it is also our first stop as we head there for breakfast. It can be a bit hard to decide where to eat as you will literally be spoiled for choice, but as we only have a day, let me narrow it down for you. Chinatown Singapore is home to 10 Michelin Bib Gourmand approved cheap eats. Six of them are located right here at the Amoy Street Food Center and none of the dishes at these places cost above $7. The Amoy Street Food Center is located at 7 Maxwell Road and there are several ways to get there depending on where you're traveling from your budget and time constraints. If you're taking a train straight from the airport for example, you will be taking the east-west line from the Changi station to the Tanjung Paga station. The Amoy Street Food Center is a roughly 7 minute walk from there. But you could also be coming from another station or you might even be catching a cab. As such, I have included the Google Map location in my description box so that you can plan your travel accordingly. The Amoy Street Food Center is open from 6.30am 7 days a week. And now on to our Michelin food tour. Our first stop is Yuanchun famous Lor Mee, aka braised pork noodles, located on the second level of the Amoy Street Food Center because braised pork noodles is one of my favorite childhood dishes. I paid $5 for a bowl of their braised pork noodles and it came with all the expected hallmarks, pieces of pork belly, fried fish, and a half boiled egg. And guys, if you've never tried this, you will love the signature thick gravy. Yuanchun Lor Mee is open from 7.30 a.m. to 2 30 p.m. on Saturdays to Wednesdays. Fishball noodles are a Singapore street food staple that you must try and other fishball noodles are located at 0114 and are open from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Wednesdays to Sundays. The dish comprises of noodles and fish balls that are freshly made daily and you can get it as a soup or dry noodle dish. I recommend going with the dry noodle option and this bowl cost me just $4.50. Located right next door to Arta is the noodle stall you want to try if you like fur. Honky Beef Noodles is located at stall 0142 and have been serving up noodles for over 60 years. This costs just $6 and the beef bone broth is the superstar here. It was super flavorful and hot enough to cook the layers of thinly sliced beef on the top. So good. Our next stop is located just across from Arthur and Honky Noodles. It serves up a street food that you do not want to miss out on. Curry Puffs. J2 famous curry puffs have been a Michelin favorite since 
since 2016. They are located at stall 0121 and sells these Singapore Street Eats staples for just $1.80 each. As a Malaysian, I have a PhD in curry puffs eating and can honestly say that these were a 10 out of 10. They are only open from Mondays to Fridays from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. though, so only add this to the list if you're visiting on a weekday. My grandmother used to make these sticky rice dumplings aka bachangs from scratch and honestly eating this always reminds me of home. Hoki bachang have been operating since 1948 and have even been featured on CNN Travel. I got the deluxe bachang with chestnut, pork, salted egg yolk and mushroom for $5.50 and can honestly say it is one of the best bachangs I've ever had. Second to my grandmother's one of course. They are open from Tuesdays to Fridays from 11am to 3pm. Most of the other food spots I've recommended are open earlier, however if you can wait around till 11am, I highly recommend leaving room for this noodle restaurant. I promise you it's worth it. The noodle story is a spot that is not only approved by the Michelin Guide, but also by some of my favourite food bloggers including Seth Loy and Daniel Food Diary. They are open from 11am to 3pm and then again from 4pm to 8pm on all days apart from Sunday. I got the Singapore style ramen and guys it was so good. Peppery noodles are served with slices of peppery pork belly and a tamago. This ramen with a local twist is definitely worth your time and appetite. As these places are all open at different times and days, I've also included the stall names, numbers, pricing and opening hours in my description box so that you can plan your food trip at the Amoy Street Food Centre accordingly. But now it's time to walk off some of that food because we are going to check out the Universal Studios in Singapore. If you've never been, you need to know this next couple of things. One, they are open from 11am daily. Two, general tickets are priced at 61 Singapore dollars and you can purchase this ahead of time to make your trip efficient and if you are visiting during peak seasons, for example during school holidays, I also highly recommend you purchase the Universal Express Pass which will allow you to skip the queues. The Express version allows you to skip the queues once and the Express Unlimited allows you to skip as many times as you like. I have included the booking information and links in my description box. 3. You can keep your bags at the entrance but make sure you only bring small bags as the lockers there aren't very big. But if you're carrying loose things like keys and phones, I highly recommend you store it especially if you plan to join one of the rides. 4. There are 6 theme parks inside the Universal Studios and you can actually see the map at the entrance so that you can plan your time accordingly. You can also scan and download their app so that you have the map handy. In terms of layout, you will see the Hollywood and Sesame Street sections of the park from the moment you walk in and if you have kids, these are the places to be as you will get to meet and greet your favourite characters from the Minions, Kung Fu Panda and Sesame Street. You also get to do some shopping as the merchandise from the above characters and more are all in this section. Walk a little further and you will enter Sci-Fi City where you get to meet and greet your favourite characters from the Transformers and Battlestar Galactica. My personal highlights in this section is the sassiest talking Megatron you'll ever meet and of course the Transformers ride. But if you like the Mummy's movie franchise, you will love this next section. Honestly, I was really impressed at how realistic the structures at the Ancient Egypt section was. It looks just like the real thing. Rides wise, the Revenge of the Mummy is an absolute must. And as we are already on an adrenaline high, we might as well head into the Jurassic Park themed Lost World. My personal favourite in this section is the up close and personal session that you get with a super realistic raptor. Once you've ventured through these sections, you will now approach the fairy tale section of the park and get to meet with all your favourite characters from Shrek and also grab a bite to eat. If you're still looking to do a ride, I also recommend the Canopy Ride. And also if you're looking for some food with a bit more of a local flavour, I highly recommend the Malaysian Food Street Centre located right outside the Universal Studios entrance. Hot tip, you can actually exit Universal and re-enter should you want to visit this food court halfway through your exploration. Alternatively, you can also drop by the food court for a bite to eat after finishing up at the Universal Studios before we head off to our next destination, which is located right next door. The Sea Aquarium is open from 10am to 5pm daily and is home to over 100,000 marine animals that represent close to a thousand species in more than 45 diverse habitats. The creatures are spread across a nine distinct sections and the entire thing will take you around two to three hours to do properly. Tickets start from $32 for kids and $43 for adults and as 
promise I have included the booking links in my description box. But you cannot say you've been to Singapore until you've seen the country's most famous creature, the Merlion, a mythical creature with a lion's head and the body of a fish that speaks of the country's origins as a fishing village. The country's original mascot is located at the Merlion Park which is at 1 Fullerton, Singapore. It will take you roughly 40 minutes to get there if you're catching public transport from the Sea Aquarium as you will first need to train to Vivo City and then catch a bus to Fullerton Square. Alternatively, if you are rushing for time, you can also catch an Uber or cab. As always, I have included the Google Map pin location in my description box so that you can plan your travel accordingly. I can almost bet that you've come across our next destination when researching for your trip to Singapore. The Gardens by the Bay is a nature park spanning 250 acres that was part of the country's plan to raise the quality of life by enhancing greenery and flora in the city. Located at 18 Marina Gardens Drive, it is a roughly 17 minute walk from the Merlion Park. But as always, I've included the Google Map pin in my description box so that you can plan your travel according to your situation. The must try here is the OCBC Skyway Bridge. You get to witness the super trees up close and personal, but also get panoramic views of the city. Tickets start from $8 for kids and $12 for adults. Ticket booking links have been included in my description box. If you're only in Singapore for a day though, now's the time to head back to the airport. But surprise, our Singapore tour hasn't ended just yet. The Jewel at Changi is a must visit for anybody visiting Singapore and everybody is here for this. The HSBC Rain Vortex is quite the sight to behold. It is located at the Jewel Airport. The HSBC Rain Vortex is only operational from 10 or 11 a.m. till 10 p.m. But the best time to witness the Vortex is during the daily recurring light shows which happen at 7.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. on Mondays to Thursdays with an additional 9.30 p.m. show on Fridays to Sundays as well as on public holidays. This is the best time to see the Vortex in its absolute finest form. I mean, just look at it. Oh, and hot tip, the HSBC Vortex is located outside of the immigration checkpoints, which means that you need to see it before you clear immigrations. And while you're there, don't forget to walk around the Shishedo Rainforest, which is the greenery surrounding the Vortex. Go up the levels to see which level gives you the best vantage point of the Vortex. This one is not to be missed. At this point, you're probably booking that trip for Singapore, but before you do that, there are a couple of things you need to know, and I've outlined those before in my What You Need to Know Before Going to Singapore video, which I've linked at the end of this video, so that you can go ahead and watch that next. And also, if you've enjoyed the food tour at Chinatown Singapore and do actually have more than one day to spend in Singapore, you should check out all 10 of the Michelin Bib Goman Cheap Eats in Chinatown. Again, I've linked at that video at the end of this video. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, informative, or entertaining in any way, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. It is absolutely free to do, but it really just helps my tiny little channel out. I upload every Saturday, so be sure to also hit that bell notification so that you can start your weekends with me. And if you got to this point of the video, I want to thank you so much for your support and do hope that you have a great day ahead or that you've already had a good day. As always, I will see you very soon in the next video.